Breaking news from Cape Canaveral, Florida. History is unfolding before our eyes as Blue Origin's massive New Glenn rocket stands ready on the launch pad for its maiden voyage. Today marks a pivotal moment in commercial spaceflight, the debut launch of one of the most powerful rockets ever built. The seven BE-4 engines, each generating immense thrust, are about to roar to life. This isn't just another rocket launch. This is New Glenn's first step toward revolutionizing access to space. The mission, deliver critical payloads to orbit while attempting something extraordinary, landing a massive first stage booster on a ship at sea. With years of development, countless tests, and the dreams of thousands of engineers behind it, Blue Origin is about to demonstrate what their team has accomplished. We've got exclusive coverage of every crucial moment, from liftoff to stage separation, and the dramatic landing attempt of that massive seven meter wide booster. From the Rocket Park at Launch Complex 36, this is the Elon Musk 24-hour channel, bringing you complete coverage of this historic launch. Let's dive right in. This introduction aims to capture the historic significance while maintaining authenticity and building anticipation for the key events that unfold in the video. Would you like me to modify anything about this version? The preparations at Launch Complex 36 are reaching their final stages. Through the early morning mist, New Glenn's massive silhouette towers against the Florida sky, a testament to Blue Origin's bold vision of making space accessible. The rocket stands 98 meters tall, its sleek blue and silver frame gleaming under the launch pad lights. As dawn breaks over Cape Canaveral, the launch team moves with practice precision through their final checks. Each step, each verification, brings us closer to this historic moment. The weather is holding steady, perfect conditions for New Glenn's maiden flight. In the control room, dozens of engineers monitor their stations, their faces illuminated by the soft glow of computer screens displaying critical mission data. PL level GS2 at play level, comes the first call. The massive deluge system activates, releasing torrents of water across the pad. This isn't just for show. These thousands of gallons of water will protect the pad from the intense heat and acoustic energy of seven BE-4 engines at full thrust. Big water start, that's the big water command. The rumble of the water system resonates through the launch complex, a prelude to the power about to be unleashed. The countdown enters its final phase, 10 seconds. The launch team's years of preparation, countless tests, and unwavering dedication have led to this moment. Autopilot enabled. The rocket's sophisticated flight computer takes control. In these final moments, New Glenn stands ready, primed to write its name in the history books of space exploration. Seven, six, five, four. The tension in the control room is palpable. Every heart beats in sync with the countdown. Lift off! The seven BE-4 engines ignite simultaneously, unleashing a combined thrust of nearly four million pounds. The ground trembles as New Glenn breaks free from Earth's embrace. All seven engines at full thrust, Flames and smoke engulf the pad as the rocket begins its journey skyward. Engine chamber pressures are good, reports the flight controller, their voice steady despite the historic nature of the moment. New Glenn clears the tower, rising on a column of fire and thunder. The early morning sky transforms into a canvas of orange and white as the rocket accelerates upward. At 18 seconds into flight, everything is performing flawlessly. The vehicle begins its pitch and roll maneuver, a graceful dance that will align it on its intended trajectory. Body rate responses are nominal, confirms Mission Control. This crucial maneuver demonstrates the precise control Blue Origin's engineers have built into this massive vehicle. Through the onboard cameras, we witness Earth's horizon slowly tilting as New Glenn charts its course downrange. One minute into flight, the excitement builds. New Glenn is pushing through the sound barrier and soon we hear those magical words. New Glenn is now supersonic. The rocket powers through max Q, maximum dynamic pressure, the point where aerodynamic stresses on the vehicle reach their peak. It's a crucial milestone, and New Glenn handles it with remarkable stability. The flight continues picture perfect as New Glenn soars higher into the thinning atmosphere. Two minutes into the mission, the vehicle is performing exactly as designed. 
The BE4 engines, burning liquid oxygen and liquefied natural gas, continue to push the rocket faster and higher, their blue flame characteristic of this clean-burning fuel combination. At three minutes into flight, we approach one of the mission's most dramatic moments. Main engine cut off. The seven massive engines fall silent. In the next instant, we witness the choreographed separation of the first and second stages. It's a flawless separation, captured in stunning detail by onboard cameras. The second stage's single BE-3U engine ignites right on schedule, continuing the journey to orbit while the first stage begins its ambitious return journey. Now comes one of the most challenging aspects of the mission, the attempted landing of the first stage booster. This massive component, standing as tall as a 23-story building, begins its controlled descent back through the atmosphere. The landing ship Jacqueline waits in the Atlantic Ocean, ready to receive its towering guest. The tension builds as we track both mission elements, the second stage pushing toward orbit with its payload, and the booster making its precision approach toward the landing ship. The booster ignites its engines for the entry burn, slowing its descent and protecting itself from the intense heat of atmospheric re-entry. The steering fins at the booster's top and the aerodynamic strakes work in perfect harmony, guiding the massive rocket through its descent. As we pass the six-minute mark, both stages continue their respective journeys. The second stage performance remains nominal, its BE-3U engine pushing the payload closer to its intended orbit. Meanwhile, the booster begins its final approach to the landing ship. Three of its BE-4 engines reignite for the landing burn, a spectacular sight as they work to slow the massive structure for landing. But then, at 7 minutes and 45 seconds into the mission, something unexpected occurs. The booster's telemetry becomes erratic, and then, silence. The video feed freezes. The control room holds its breath. Despite getting remarkably close to its landing target, the booster is lost. It's a reminder of the immense challenges involved in recovering such a massive rocket stage. Yet even as we process this development, there's triumph in the mission control room. The second stage continues its perfect performance, pushing onward to achieve the day's primary objective. At 12 minutes and 53 seconds into flight, the announcement comes, GS-2 is now orbital. The cheers and applause are deafening. Blue Origin has done it. New Glenn has reached orbit on its very first flight. The celebrations at Rocket Park capture the magnitude of this achievement. Eddie Sear, standing among the jubilant team members, puts it perfectly. What an incredible rumble from the BE-4 engines. This was such an experience to live together, to be a part of this community. Amazing. While the loss of the booster represents a setback, it doesn't diminish the day's historic achievement. New Glenn has proven itself capable of delivering payloads to orbit, demonstrating the validity of Blue Origin's design and opening new possibilities for commercial space access. The data gathered from this flight, including the booster's near successful return attempt, will prove invaluable for future launches. The Blue Ring Pathfinder payload, now safely in orbit, begins its six-hour mission to collect crucial data that will inform future missions. As the teams in Huntsville, Kent, and here in Florida celebrate this milestone, they're already looking ahead to analyzing the flight data and preparing for the next launch. This maiden flight of New Glenn represents more than just a successful launch. It's a testament to human ingenuity, perseverance, and the relentless pursuit of making space more accessible. While not every objective was achieved, the primary mission goal was accomplished spectacularly, marking Blue Origin's entry into orbital spaceflight and adding another chapter to the ongoing story of commercial space exploration. As the celebrations continue at Cape Canaveral, the significance of today's achievement ripples across the space industry. Though the booster landing didn't go as planned, Blue Origin has joined an elite club of companies capable of reaching orbit. The successful deployment of the Blue Ring Pathfinder marks not just the end of this mission, but the beginning of a new era in commercial spaceflight. Dr. Sarah Chen, Blue Origin's lead flight director, puts it in perspective. Every first flight teaches us something invaluable. Today, we prove New Glenn's fundamental design is sound. The data we gathered from both the successful orbital insertion and the landing attempt will make our next flight even better. Back at Launch Complex 36, 
As the Florida sun sets on this historic day, the Launchpad team is already preparing for what comes next. The massive deluge system that roared to life this morning now glistens quietly in the evening light. A reminder that in the space industry, every end is just another beginning. This is James Mitchell for Elon Musk 24 Hours, bringing you history in the making. We'll be back with detailed analysis of today's flight data and exclusive interviews with the team behind this remarkable achievement. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for unprecedented access to the future of space exploration. Hit that like button if you felt the ground shake with those B4 engines and share your thoughts about this historic launch in the comments below. Until next time, keep looking up. The space revolution is just getting started. In the heart of Texas, at SpaceX's Starbase facility, something extraordinary is happening. Engineers are making bold moves with Starship's design that nobody saw coming. As Flight 7's launch window approaches on January 13th, the team has unveiled a striking modification to their flagship vehicle, and it's not what anyone expected. Inside Megabay 2, Starship stands tall its black thermal protection system gleaming under the bright industrial lights. But look closer, and you'll notice something unusual. Strategic gaps in the heat shield tiles. These aren't manufacturing defects or damage. They're intentional changes that could revolutionize how we think about spacecraft thermal protection. SpaceX has modified approximately 100 sheer 77,000 heat shield tiles in this latest iteration, known as Starship Phi-2. These changes represent more than just a simple upgrade. They're a complete rethinking of how we protect spacecraft during the inferno of atmospheric re-entry. The question on everyone's mind, why would SpaceX deliberately remove sections of the very shield designed to protect Starship during its most critical phase of flight? The answer could change everything we know about spacecraft design. Hey everyone, welcome to Elon Musk 24 Hours, where we bring you the latest developments in space technology and innovation. Let's dive right in. The story of Starship's heat shield begins not with triumph, but with challenge. Three years ago, when Elon Musk first revealed SpaceX's ambitious plans for a fully reusable spacecraft, critics said it couldn't be done. The heat shield alone, they argued, would make rapid reusability impossible. Traditional spacecraft use ablative heat shields that burn away during re-entry a one-and-done approach that worked for Apollo, but wouldn't cut it for Starship's ambitious mission profile. Standing in Mega Bay 2 today, looking up at Starship's gleaming black surface, those early doubts feel like ancient history, but the path to this moment has been anything but smooth. Each test flight has written its own chapter in Starship's development story. Each landing, successful or not, has taught the team invaluable lessons about what it takes to build a spacecraft truly capable of reaching Mars. The missing tiles we're seeing on Starship Romine how to tell a fascinating story of engineering evolution. These aren't random gaps. They're precisely calculated windows into SpaceX's bold new approach to thermal protection. Each missing section follows a careful horizontal pattern around the ship's body, creating what engineers call thermal test zones. But why take such a risk with one of the most critical systems on the spacecraft? To understand this decision, we need to dive into the brutal physics of atmospheric re-entry. When a spacecraft plunges back into Earth's atmosphere at 7.8 kilometers per second, about 17,000 miles per hour, it creates a shock wave of superheated plasma that turns the surrounding air into a furnace hot enough to melt steel. The temperatures reach a staggering 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to vaporize most materials known to mankind. Picture yourself sitting in a spacecraft during re-entry. Outside your window, a violent storm of purple and orange flames dances across the heat shield. The vessel shakes as supersonic winds try to tear it apart. This isn't science fiction. It's the reality faced by every astronaut who's ever returned from space. As one astronaut described it, it's like riding a meteor back to Earth. The conventional wisdom has always been simple. More protection equals better chances of survival. But SpaceX is challenging this fundamental assumption. 
By strategically removing tiles, they're not just testing the heat shield, they're rewriting the rules of spacecraft design. The first possibility is that SpaceX has discovered something revolutionary about structural durability. By exposing certain areas of the spacecraft's skin directly to re-entry conditions, they can test whether the underlying structure is more resistant